The Digital Photography Cafe show is brought to you by Focus Pyramid, the autofocus lens calibration tool for your camera. And by Mosaic, your Lightroom photos automatically on every device and backed up. And by Shootproof, the easy way to proof and sell your photos online. Welcome to the Digital Photography Cafe Show. Join hosts Trevor Curran and Joseph Christina as they chat about the art and business of photography. Hey everybody, welcome back to the show. This is episode 101. I'm Joseph Christina here with my co-host Trevor Curran. On last week's episode, we celebrated our 100th anniversary with a really great giveaway, answered some of your questions, and played some listener voicemail. If you haven't watched last week's show, I encourage you to do so. You can find it at our website, digitalphotographycafe.com, in iTunes, listen with the popular Stitcher, TuneIn, and Xbox music apps, or watch in HD on TiVo. So, Joe, we are back. How you doing, my we friend? Here. How are you doing? <laughs> It's a little rough start here, but we got it. Yeah, yeah, we we got it. We got it. It's another week, 101. 101, that's right. Love it, love it. A lot of cool stuff uh, this week. We have that amazing, great, wonderful giveaway. Yeah, we're going to yeah. announce some winners throughout the yep. show, so that's cool. Everybody uh, stay cool. tuned, listen for your name, see if you won. Uh, we'll also contact you by email, so just in case yeah, uh, absolutely. you didn't hear it. You know. I, I tell you what, Trev. Before we get into the show, kind of proper, mm. um, as we as we say, you know, we need to recognize all the poor folks over there in Boston. Um, you know, during the Boston Marathon, that uh, basically were hit with you know a terrorist attack by two guys. It seems to be um, the case, um, right. carrying backpacks, and you know, set off two bombs at the finish line, and uh, yeah, killed a couple a people, sad, sad. injured many. And uh, really, you know, I mean, it was something that, I mean, the Boston Marathon, that's a, that, I mean, that's like a mainstay in, in the U.S. You know, I mean, this is something that we do every year. It's huge. It's on all the news channels and everything. And that's, of course, why they chose that as a target. Sure. Um, it's so unfortunate. Um, of course, I mean, everybody throughout the world, um, I'm sure, feels the pain with something like this when it happens. Um, but the interesting thing about it, you know, we we always talk about, you know, citizen journalism. The last couple of shows, we've been talking about that a lot. And, yeah. you know, in this case of Boston, I mean, that's where the footage came from, from, you know, these explosions going off. And it was cell phone footage and things like that from people just standing near the finishing line with their cameras rolling, trying to capture right. maybe somebody they knew or something coming over the yeah. finish line, never expecting anything like this. And now you see this, you know, video across, you know, nationwide news here. Yeah, it's, you know, the whole idea of the citizen journalism is just, we have been talking about it a lot as yeah. of late because it has become um, something that is very interesting and it has definitely changed the way, you know, let's say news is covered, yes. um, where you just can't have a professional in every specific spot. You know, if there's a hurricane coming, you know, of course you can send a correspondent uh, to the location where it is supposed to hit, let's say. Right. Um, but, you know, in case, let's say a tornado or like with this, a terrorist attack, you're not going to send someone there before it happens. No. You have not a clue. It's going to be spontaneous, obviously. But, you know, the thing that kind of, you know, kind of gets me and it's it's kind of interesting uh, and kind of scary, too, is, you know, people are are starting to cover these events accidentally. And, you know, there's a fine line. Like, for example, if you're a correspondent in war, you know, you are given a camera and not a gun. And you're right. you're, you're said to I don't care if people are dying around you. You need to cover their death. You need to cover everything that's going on. And, you know, it takes a certain person to be able to do that to kind of, um, let's say, take themselves out of the situation and know that no matter what's happening around them, they are there solely to cover it. Because right. if they don't cover it, it will never be covered by any. Yeah, it won't so be they, documented. They, it, right. So, you know, in this case, you know, these people are, you know, sitting there with their phones, recording, taking pictures, and people are like falling around them. And, you know, I, I remember reading an article where this, you know, there was a pro photographer there taking images. And, you know, it, 
it's like, what do you do? You know, do you continue to take the pictures or do you stop and go and help somebody? You know, it's such a fine line right. on what to do. And I remember one of the last things that I read that, that he was talking about is seeing a baby carriage upside down. Right. And he's taking pictures and he's like, oh my God. And he stops for a minute and he goes and grabs it and turns it over and thank God it was empty. there was no baby yeah. underneath. But, you know, so these are the type of, you know, I see them as possible, you know, post-traumatic uh, stress sure. um, situations, right? Where people now are not capable of, you know, let's say can cope with these type of situations that are actually covering it, right. but kind of inadvertently just thrown in. So, uh, yeah, and that's where you humanity has to step in and and take over in these types of scenarios. Um, you know, I mean, nobody ever expected anything like this to happen. Obviously, you know, we we you know, Boston was not prepared for something like that up front. Um, right. you know, they didn't have medical staff standing by waiting for all of this. Everybody just kind of jumped in and started doing their thing. You know, the medical staff that was there at the finish line um, to help with dehydration. Um, there right. was a doctor there. I know he, I saw him on the news. He was there, um, to, to deal with dehydration. He's doing like triage. Yeah. He's doing triage on, on, <laughs> on the things. injured there. So, um, you know, thank God that those people were there to help out, to help the victims. Um, you know, but yeah, I mean, this, this is, it's got to, journalism has got to be something that's really tough, especially when you're a, a war correspondent you know, when you're put in a situation like that to really separate yourself and do your job and and try and, you know, capture what you need to capture to document what's going on, but yet still be human to right. help when needed, you know, and, and right. that's what's really hard, but... Fine, fine line for sure. Yeah. But yes, um, FBI, I know um, at the very beginning, they were asking for any footage that you had, any, yeah. any video, any um, photos, anything... Um, so they can basically put it all together and try to develop a timeline of, you know, who was walking around, when they were walking around and different angles. Right. So, you know, they found the two guys, one with the black hat, one with the white hat, and they found like tons of different pictures from different angles of, of these people. Yeah. So um, even one was a video and the guy you can see was kind of like his right leg almost had like a limp to it. Like if he was bow legged a little bit and one person said, oh, you know, maybe the backpack was heavy. I'm going to say the backpack wasn't heavy. You probably just had a limp and they probably were using, you know, plastics, you know, some type of plastic explosives that weren't that heavy right. because to be able to make a bomb that powerful and only have it, you know, really small in a small little, you know, um, you know, backpack, right. it's got to be a pretty powerful type of substance. It sure wasn't gunpowder with nails or something. Right. This no, was, no, no. this was high tech. Yeah. This was not. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's a sad, sad day. I think it was like three, um, ended up, uh, dying and, over 100, 130 or something wounded, some crazy number. Yep. And uh, um, as of today, as of a few hours ago, one um, was killed by, I believe, the uh, police and the other one is still at large. Yeah, so, yeah, there was a, um, I, I actually saw it on Facebook this morning um, before, you know, before we started recording here. And uh, yeah, there was a video clip that from Huffington Post. Um, they had a little bit of a story about it and they said that, you know, supposedly these guys were robbing a couple places. Um, they hijacked a car. Um, they took off in it. I guess there were, you know, the police went after them and gunfights broke out and the one of the suspects um, was shot, taken to the hospital where he died. I believe I heard something too about a police officer dying as well. Um, so wow. I'm not 100% sure about that. But yes, apparently the other person is still at large, considered, you know, armed and dangerous and, and yeah. all that. So. Well, I tell you what, our thoughts go out to Absolutely. You know, everyone up north and all the family members, the victims and family of the victims. It's definitely um, quite a tragedy. And now there's going to be another huge uh, marathon coming, you know, now across the pond, right? I think, uh, what is it, uh, in the UK someplace or, or what's coming up soon. And I can imagine there, you know, the security sure. that's going to be going on over there, um, um, you know, seeing what just happened here. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a sad, sad, sad time. Yeah, it is. Well, it is. Well, I guess on a lighter note, we should yeah. announce um, a few of the winners from last week's um, giveaway, right? Yeah. Yeah. We'll bring things up a little bit. We'll, we'll put some fun back into people's lives That's here right. and then we'll, we'll, uh, kind of move on with the meat and potatoes for this week. So, uh, yeah. So the first winner 
Um, this person is getting a focus pyramid, and um, the name is Heike. Heike, Hi nice. I guess. Heike. Um, H E I K E. Yes. Um, yes. And we have your email, so we'll definitely shoot you an email. You don't have to worry about that. Um, and then Andy also won a focus pyramid, and Jeannie, um, she won a shoot proof uh subscription Excellent. to the uh the one year subscription for um five thousand photos which is really cool excellent yes excellent well there's definitely more winners to come during the show so That's right. maybe we should get into some other stuff now i know this week you were playing with an application yes. on your ipad that you were raving about like um i used to or with a couple of shows ago i i raved about this application called clear i believe just to keep me organized um, but you were raving to me about this really cool app, right? It's yeah. like an air display type of app. Yeah. So basically kind of the background of, of why I needed something. I had a client meeting coming up and I needed to uh, present something on my laptop computer at their location. Um, they don't have a projector. I don't have a portable projector to bring with me. I needed some way of showing them what I was talking about on a website without them having to literally sit over my shoulder. It's obviously that's an uncomfortable situation. Right. So, you know, for some reason, I thought I remembered reading or hearing or something somewhere about the ability to turn your iPad into an external computer monitor. So I did some quick Google searching and I found an app called Air Display. And Air Display, it actually works on the iPhone and an iPad. And it's from uh, Avatron Software. And it actually turns your iOS device, your your uh, iPad in this case, into an external monitor, which is awesome. really awesome. And you can actually use it as an extended desktop. So you can put like Photoshop palettes, let's say, on your yeah, iPad. That's, that's for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Or you can mirror with it. And that was what I did. I actually set the iPad up to mirror, set it down on the table at my client's seat, and then just looked at the laptop and she was thrilled. I mean, she thought yeah, that was- she's probably like, wow, this is pretty cool. Like Star Trek. Yeah. Kind of stuff. Yeah. So it's my understanding. Uh, am I wrong here that um, it'll also allow, let's say the client to swipe through things. In other words, there, there's a tactile, in other words, input. Yes. Not yes. Just you display. can actually use the touch display of the yeah, iPad awesome. as an input device. So that's cool. if yes, I mean, you could, if I were on a web page, let's say, and they wanted to scroll up and down, they could just put their finger on the page and actually move it up and down. And then my screen on the computer would actually respond that way. Right. Which is right. really so cool. So that's, that's pretty cool. So it is a direct link. It's not just a display. Right. It's a input output yes. at that point. Now device. the beauty not, is you can actually output. turn that touch off. You can turn the touch display off on the computer exactly. settings. So that will prevent the client from moving your computer screen around or something like that. So, which is good. I mean, in this case, you know, I had laid it out as just a monitor. The idea was not interaction. So I had turned that feature off. Um, doing my testing right. though, I did find it to be a little buggy when you go to bring the keyboard, the virtual keyboard on the iPad up. You know, when, right. you're, when you're in the app, there's a little like ghosted image at the bottom of the screen that shows the keyboard and you can touch it, it pops the keyboard up. As soon as that keyboard come up, the app crashed. So. Yeah, but you uh, you have like the iPad 1. Yeah, I have or, the first right? generation iPad. Yeah, so it could be, you know, something as simple as right. it just didn't have enough processing power to be able to do, you know, the display as well as the input through the keyboard or who knows what. So right. we don't want to... We don't want to talk down on the app because it could be, you know, your device that's causing it. Could be my hardware. Yeah, it's absolutely. possible. Absolutely. But either way, things like this are so advanced. I mean, this is cutting edge. It's pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, there's going to be some bugs. That, you know, that's just kind of inevit inevitable. And uh, the the beauty of it is, it's like ten bucks, right? It's, it's only a, yeah nine ninety nine at the app store. It's really cheap. Right. Um, and you know what? That was probably the best ten dollars I ever spent. I mean, it's it <laughs> is fantastic. I mean, if you couple this with a like a Verizon MiFi device, a hotspot device. I mean, you can right. pretty much be mobile and completely disconnected from any, you know, any dependency on any client network or any facility. You can access the internet, you can display your your stuff. I mean, it really is pretty awesome. Yeah. See, for me what I would do with this is um let's say doing a commercial shoot, I would I would have this mirror basically, let's say Lightroom 
um, when we're gathering proofs um, yes. of the pictures, let's say of the model or the product shot or whatever, um, and allow the art director or whoever is, you know, deciding what's going to be good and, you know, thrown out, what's, wh which ones are the five star Absolutely. images yeah. and let them actually monitor it right there on the iPad. And we know the iPad's color rendition is spot on, really right. good. You could even color calibrate the, uh, the iPad also yes, if you, you needed to. But just for a secondary monitor where they don't have to sit over your shoulder or, you know, be viewing it on the big, you know, 27s that we have there while we're doing the work to be able to let them sit on a couch and actually see what we're doing. And let's say put up a list. Right. And what's cool is they could interact with it. So let's say if we had thumbnail display going on, they could actually, you know, uh, let's say push on a specific image, open it up larger and uh, kind of zoom in and out of it uh, through uh, through Lightroom or, or through whatever, whatever type of um, yes. you know, package you're using, Aperture, who knows what. But regardless, very, very useful um, for professional, uh, let's say, photographers to be able, not just, you know, just for meetings and stuff, which I think is amazing, right. but to actually do that, quote unquote, on the spot, on location proofing. Awesome. Right. Very well, cool. and you know, then it turns into a mobile second monitor. If you're in a hotel room, right. you're on location or what have you, and you have your laptop, you can have a nice thin little iPad that you take along with you and actually set up another monitor right next to you. And you can put your Photoshop palettes on it, like I had mentioned, or whatever. It makes um, working a lot easier, especially when yeah. you're talking about a small laptop screen. Yeah, especially for, you know, we use the th little 13 inch to yeah. go grab another 10 inch on the side. I have, that's, yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. Yeah, absolutely. That's great. So I tell you what, before we go any further, I know we're going to jump into some more of these giveaways, but before we get there, let's go ahead and hear from a few of our sponsors. Are you frustrated with slightly out of focus images when you know your autofocus spot was dead on? It's simply not your fault. From manufacturer to manufacturer, and even lens copy to lens copy, there are slight variances to the exact spot where light is being focused onto the sensor. Finally, there's a product that allows you to compensate for those variances and make sharper images immediately. Focus Pyramid, the autofocus lens calibration tool, is an absolute must for every photographer. If you want to make the sharpest images possible, then you need to take control over your camera's focusing system. With the Focus Pyramid, you can calibrate all of your lenses on your lunch break. The Focus Pyramid makes lens calibration quick and easy at an affordable price. So give your lenses a new lease on life and take your photography to the next level. Head over to focuspyramid.com forward slash DPC and get an additional 10% off just for being a show listener. From phones, tablets, laptops, and PCs, these days, photographers use multiple internet-connected devices. Have you ever wished you could view your Lightroom images, folders, collections, and metadata from any of these devices? Now you can. Mosaic Storage Systems has created Mosaic View, an application that gives you access to your images without exporting or using a publishing service. Mosaic also offers Mosaic Archive, which directly integrates with Lightroom as a powerful cloud backup solution. Mosaic gives photographers access to all of their images from anywhere on virtually any device. Try Mosaic View today for free and access 2,000 of your most recent images. As a Digital Photography Cafe viewer, Mosaic is offering a 20% discount off any of their premium plans. Go to mosaicarchive.com and use coupon code DPCAFE at checkout. Mosaic. Lightroom. Anywhere. Any device. Secure. Backed up. As photographers, we're always trying to increase sales and profits after every event. We shoot an event and have hundreds or even thousands of images that just sit on our hard drives. Perhaps a better workflow would increase sales by getting those valuable images in front of the client. That's where ShootProof comes in. At ShootProof.com, you can have an online gallery for all of your clients' proofing needs. ShootProof helps increase profits while building your brand and securing your photos without charging commission fees on sales. ShootProof galleries display your photos beautifully while helping to streamline your workflow and automate more of your business through their intuitive studio control panel. Once approved, photos can be directly fulfilled through ShootProof's various professional lab partners or fulfilled by you. All ShootProof plans have the same feature set. You simply choose the number of client photos stored, decide what products to sell, and the price. Try ShootProof today by taking advantage of their free 30-day trial offer. 
As a Digital Photography Cafe viewer, Shootproof is offering a 20% discount off any of their premium plans by using promo code DPC20 at checkout. Shootproof. Upload, share, sell, print. All right, so Joe, we are back, and now let's select uh, three more winners in our big 100th uh, giveaway. And the Excellent. first one is Grant. And Grant, you're going to get a Lexar SD card, which is nice. pretty awesome. I mean, that's like a $100 value or something like that. That's really, really nice. It was great of Lexar to come in and support our giveaway, too, this time around. Yeah, yeah I love Lexar. Yeah, Definitely. it's very cool. And then we had Lindsay. Um, she... Also gets a Lexar card, but this is a CF card, a compact nice. flash card. Very yeah, cool. I'm going to have to fight Lindsay, <laughs> I think, for that one. Because it's a nice that's one. I, if I remember correctly, it's one of those 800X or some yeah, crazy yeah. speed it, CF cards. It's fast. Uh, really, really nice. Yeah, yeah very nice. And, well, uh, congratulations, Lindsay. I won't take it. No, no, that's right. <laughs> and Thomas, Thomas, you are going to get a focus period. Nice. Very cool. Yep, sharper images. Can't beat that. That is right. Very good, very good. So as we were wandering around, um, once again this week, looking for some cool stuff um, in photography, in the photography realm, we found, of course, Adobe Photoshop's Lightroom 5. Public beta is now out for you to go and download. Yep. Um, and uh, just a lot of really nice stuff. Um, you know, we were going through the press release and going to take a look at some of the stuff and cool stuff. Good stuff, actually. Yeah, yeah. Advanced healing brush. Um, it's actually yeah. several new tools this time around, which which looks pretty good. And some enhancements of some, you know, old stuff, bug fixes, things like that. Of course, right. Um, but the usual, you know, like fixes. you always say, though, um, if you're going to play with the beta, um, do it on a non-primary workstation because again, yes. it is beta. It could be buggy. There's things that may not work. Yeah, beta is buggy. That's just the way it yep. is. Um, you know, it's not alpha. It's not like you're, you know, testing it for them. You, you know, you're, you're pre it's pretty close to being yeah. fleshed out. Um, but you know, with beta, don't use it for production, obviously. Um, and you know, the, the catalog that you make with it, just, you know, keep it separate yep, keep it and, separate. uh, maybe only bring in your special pictures that you want to play with, um, in there to really test it out. But I tell you what, yeah, advanced, uh, the the stuff that's in this five is a pretty good assortment of good stuff, um, stuff that I would say, yes, it's it's worth upgrading if you're on three or four. Um, the advanced brushes is good. That's, of course, you know, just like anything else the, the, from before, it's that whole, um, you know, removing objects from a scene, even when the object is kind of like irregular in shape. Right. So that's really cool. Very useful. Um, you know, even if it does a 90% job and you have to fix that extra 10%, that is a ton of work it's a big that you don't have to do. Yeah. Huge. And again, it prevents you Definitely. from having to go into Photoshop. It, it allows you yeah. to do more directly in Lightroom. Absolutely. Um, it, they have something that's called upright. And what that does is allow you to straighten images. So instead of rotating only, you can also kind of, I think it's skew. So yeah. Um, skewing is very cool because, uh, like sometimes when we do some, uh, commercial shoots, when we do real estate, so we do like million dollar real estate property, especially along the ocean. Yep. And, uh, and sometimes, you know, you shoot something and you, you, you have to be at a certain location because there's nowhere else to go. You can't go punch out a wall right. and you're going to get some distortion in the room. And if you can clean that distortion up in Lightroom, instead of going into Photoshop, like we normally do, right. that's stellar. Yeah. Once again, again, if you can get time. it done in Lightroom, you're going to save time, time and money. That's for sure. Yep. Um, uh, radial gradient. Very, very good. Um, love that. That's, you know, uh, radial gradient is pretty cool because if you guys have, have used Lightroom in the past or, or aperture or anything, um, you know, you can do like vignettes, right? You do vignettes around the outside. Sometimes they look horrible. Sometimes they look good. And, you know, after doing them for a long time, you know what the settings need to be so that they look good. Right. Um, right. Anyway, so the, the, the new gradient tool allows you to take command of that vignetting and put the vignettes in multiple spots instead of only around the outside. So you can highlight specific 
parts of an image. So what's cool is you have a raw, a raw image that has a ton of light in it, of exposure values that you can go and really move things into the dark, um, into shadow or move them um, light. So allowing, uh, you know, using these gradients will allow you to actually highlight different areas of the image with this type of vignetting technique. Nice. So that's really cool. Yeah. We had cool. to do that, of course, in the past in what? Yeah, <laughs> Photoshop. Photoshop. That's right. So um, also offline editing, smart preview. This is a big one. This one is cool. It's good for me. It's going to be good for anyone that shoots in the field and let's say brings their images onto their laptop and then, you know, later on brings it onto the main quote unquote studio machine. The reason why this is good is because it creates these smart previews. It allows you to do, um, custom, uh, things to the metadata, custom things to the, the, the editing of the photo itself. And those sidecars, that, that metadata, that information gets retained in these smart previews and then sent to the main, um, let's say, catalog after the fact, once you bring it back. Yeah, that's Whereas nice. in the past, right, we have to have multiple catalogs, merge catalogs, and, you know, sometimes it can get hokey. Um, and if there is a problem with a catalog and you end up losing a whole bunch of, you know, this yeah. is smart. This is definitely, this is worth the money for me uh, to buy it twice over yeah this is sure, cool nice. very good nice um what else do they got uh, over video there? They got slide some video show stuff. sharing so of course you know now now you've got some uh, additional abilities to create your slideshows create videos of them right and stuff uh, which is always good um yeah i don't it know sounds like I, Anna, you know we had uh animoto right remember yeah um, yeah i mean it sounds like you're getting similar you're getting closer to being able to do animoto style effects just directly from lightroom now which is Right. Which is cool. Um, I mean, me personally, I'm not really big into the video slideshows. I mean, that's not my thing. Right. Um, but I guess uh, wedding and event photographers who produce these slideshows for your clients, um, this gives you another option. I mean, it gives you right. another uh, capability without having to use a, a third party program. So I like I like how that um, they allow you to meld your images with video clips and music. Right. Um, which is good. I mean, that's yeah, no, basically, it's definitely coming a long way for sure. Yeah. Long, long, long way. Yep. So, uh, you know, how good the, the actual tool is to edit it all together, you know, to actually timeline it properly, you know, who knows? I haven't seen it yet, but the idea that they're moving forward with this, it reminds me of when they started doing book creation, uh, through Lightroom, which was quite an advancement. You'd be able to bring in templates and make books within the application, send out for print, you know, a lot of the pros didn't do that. Um, you know, they wanted something more custom, especially for a bride. They're not going right. to, you know, you don't want something that looks kind of, you know, ho-hum. Yeah, or um, like what everybody generic. else is doing. Right, exactly. You don't want more of the same, like what we say. And that's another um, thing that they improved on, right? Yeah. They did some improvements on their book creation stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, that's what they're saying here. So, uh, you know, I, I don't know. Again, I, I think I kind of agree with you. I'm not sure that I would really use um, Lightroom's capability in this way. Um, you know, again, that's just me. I mean, I'm a, I'm a designer. So right. my idea would be to actually take the images and create something custom, not something that's worked from a template. Um, I mean, you know, right. if you could start with a template and then modify it later, what have you, I guess that's, that's an option. But, um, me personally, I would probably just do them separately. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. It's uh, for me, it's the same, the same way you just, you want something, you know, if people are paying, you know, if a bride, let's, for example, for a bride, if a bride is going to pay you, you know, $3,000 for a wedding and you tell them that you're going to get a custom leather, you know, flush mount book, um, well, they need to get that book and they need to get it so that it looks really, really well. Right. And it just helps you to get, you know, new business after the fact. Um, just recently we did a really high end wedding, um, uh, with someone that has passed away. Um, uh, well, anyways, the, uh, uh, one of the, one of the football players, a very big, um, football star, um, um, junior Saya, we did, um, a wedding, uh, it was last year and he passed away and we were, I was editing through a book. Matter of fact, with him in it, it was one of the weddings that we did. And that, that specific wedding ended up producing more work because we really did a, just a, fabulous job on it and the final the final book the leather you know grain book is just amazing it really came out stellar right so but yeah you know you produce high quality stuff and you do it just great you're just going to find you're going to get more work you know you do this whole hum stuff and it's just going to be more of the same and people just you know it's going to be like yeah that's good uh, good is not good enough 
So yeah. um, anyways, regardless, um, let's go ahead. and We did get a listener uh, voicemail, right? Yeah, we played that, it last uh, week on the show. Um, Fred Pfeiffer from Chicago, he had called and he had asked us uh, questions um, in addition to, you know, the, his well wishes for our 100th show. But he was asking us right. questions about um, setting up a website to sell his photos on. So why don't we play his uh, his voicemail again, and then we'll kind of get in and answer that a little bit deeper. Cool. Let's do it. Hello, John. This is Fred Pfeiffer from Chicago. You guys gave me a shout-out on your program on Monday because I asked or I complained about the swish that was on the uh, audio <laughs> version of your show. And today, Thursday, I actually got a chance to watch you guys um, on tape or on, on video on my computer. And uh, you guys are a bunch of cool dudes. Love, love your show. Like I said, I just found you guys uh, on Stitcher looking for a bunch of photography uh, blogs and uh, fell in love with your show. Although it's only my third time listening, uh, I've become a, a fast fan. The question I have, I've been a photographer almost 55 years. So I'm a kind of old guy, and I want to get a website with all my pictures because I've been selling my photos, you know, to friends and family and other people that have that I've met throughout my life that want to buy my pictures as I've traveled all over the world and shot all kinds of cool things. And I'm struggling with which website to use as my as my photography website. I've been looking at Folio, and uh, I think the other one's called Foursquare or Corner Square or something like that as well as a number of other websites that offer you free the 30-day trial or so on. See, who would you guys recommend? I'm a professional photographer. I want to get the work out. I want to be able to sell my pictures online, post my albums online, and um, just trying to find the absolute best uh, bang for the buck. And congratulations on your upcoming 100th anniversary. That is a, a remarkable accomplishment. And uh, I look forward to listening to your 1,000th broadcast. All right, guys. Take care and uh, great show. Appreciate it. Bye. Great, great. Yeah, great call. Love, great question. That. So, uh, what we figured we'd do is actually not only answer, you know, directly for Fred, but kind of give you some other general ideas, some general concepts that may help you out in your website development. So, you know, the first thing I would say, you need to look at what you're trying to accomplish. Um, right. Are you looking to sell images as stock photography on your website? Or are you looking to maybe sell physical prints of your artwork? Um, then you need to decide if you're gonna sell physical prints, um, what, how you're gonna do it, how you're gonna fulfill it. Are you going to connect with a lab and have them fulfill the prints for you? And, and it would make sense if you're, gonna, if you're looking to do you know, your three by fives, four by, you know, four by uh, five by sevens, eight by tens, canvases, things like that. Um, but if you're doing fine art prints and maybe you have a really like high-end digital color printer, you know, an Epson or something running on specialty papers and stuff like that, maybe you want to fulfill that yourself. Um, so those kind of, those factors come into play when you're trying to decide how you're going to set up your site. Yeah, absolutely. If, if you're going to sub it out to someone else that does it, or is it going to be something that you don't, you know, that you do in-house, do you need, you know, do you need a site just to display the work? Right. Um, and then you fulfill it yourself. You need, a, you know, something that displays it and fulfills it on the back end, or you need something in the middle ground that right. can do both. Right, exactly. So. That's right. And, and as far as the displaying goes, you know, do you need password protected galleries for your clients? Um, right. That's key. I mean, you don't, you really probably do not want to put all of your clients' work out in the public. I mean, the occasional photo is part of your portfolio or something, that's fine, but you know, if you just shot a wedding and you've got a couple thousand photos or something, I mean, you don't want them all out in the public side of your, of right. your website. So for that, I would ha say you definitely want to have password protected galleries. Yeah, that is definitely a necessity, yep. and especially for, you know, we do um, for for quite some time. Um, we've been doing boudoir. Um, oh, yeah. And, you know, boudoir is essential photography. Sure. And obviously the images that we capture are very personal um, um, to the person. Sometimes we'll do boudoir, but on the bridal side. So a bride wants to do it for her, um, uh, you know, her husband to be. Um, and right. sometimes it's just people that want to do boudoir, and uh, they just want these photos for themselves, just to have, you know, for posterity, so to speak. Sure. So, yeah, but it's very personal, and you know, 
um, uh, you definitely don't want it in the um, in the open. It needs to be password protected. So that is definitely a huge uh, decision. And also, you want to you want to you know decide on how your pictures you want them displayed. Do you want them displayed? full screen, really, really large, right. um, with watermark. Do you want them really small, like thumbnails where, you know, do you want them so that they resize based on the device that yeah. is being viewed on? Yeah. That's very, very important, you know? So there's a lot of issues that go into that, right? Yeah, absolutely. Whether you want your website to be responsive and be able right. to display properly or not properly, but display in a legible manner on right. smartphones and tablet devices. So yeah, yeah, those always play into it. So, you know, when choosing your platform, um, you know, there's there's a lot of different ways you can go. There's free stuff out there, there's low cost, and then there's high priced uh, platforms that you can go with. And a few of these platforms would be um, Squarespace um, is the name of the one. Right. Um, we have ViewBook, uh, SmugMug, Photo Shelter, um, Photo Merchant, uh, Zen folio and, uh, and then there's exposure manager, Joe, and I know you've, uh, you use them, you have experience with them, right? Yeah. I've been a client of theirs for uh, three, four years, I think. Um, no, it's been, it's been some time. Um, yeah, I mean, we need, we definitely are going to put links to all of these places yeah. into the show notes so that if, you know, if you guys are in the car and you're listening to this or, or someplace where you can't, you know, get them easily, just go to the website, digitalphotographycafe.com, go to the show, um, and you'll see those show notes and the, all these will be linked in there. Right. So you can kind of go and see, but yeah, for me, I use, um, you know, exposure manager, the thing that, you know, with exposure manager that is good for me is that I do a little bit of everything. So, right. you know, my studio is not specific to one genre. There's a lot of different things going on. So, you know, I do fine art photography, so I need a specific area for that. I do boudoir, so I definitely need password protection. I do extremely affluent parties where there's dignitaries and there's, you know, actors, actresses that do not want to be out in the public. You know, there's, you know, when I'm in the inside shooting it, there's paparazzi outside trying to get, you know, images that they'll never get because I don't put them out there. And that's why they hire me because they can trust me. Right. But so there's a lot of little things like that, that for me, it really works out good. The other thing that I like about it is it's that middle ground that I was just talking about a second ago. Yeah. You can either have it directly fulfilled through them. In other words, the people can go in and say, okay, I want this picture, order it, boom. Um, they'll, they'll go ahead and send you an email and say, we need you to upload the high res version of, you know, photo X, Y, or Z, and they'll fulfill it. The they'll actually other way print to, it and ship it and the whole deal, right? They will print the whole thing. Right. You won't see it anymore. Right. Um, and um, the other side of that is you could fulfill it yourself. So they can do, they can use it just simply to look and then they contact you with those numbers and say, okay, I need this, that, and whatever, especially with fine art. And you're talking about printing, you know, using, you know, a $10,000 um, inkjet on the specialty right. rag um, type of stock that you're printing on to, you know, you're selling these things for two, three thousand dollars. Well, sure. obviously you're not going to go have it fulfilled somewhere. You want to do it yourself to make sure that it's of that quality or of all of, of your quality. Right. So, you know, yeah. And then you can, I would be able to fulfill those myself. So yeah, so it's, it kind of gets the best of both worlds. You can integrate it with your website. I don't. Um, but many of these uh, sites allow this integration. So yeah. certain Let's WordPress, um, let's say they might have a plugin, like you always say, there's a plugin there's for a that. Plugin for that. Yep. That's right. <laughs> they might have a plugin that will directly connect that specific, um, uh, your, let's say, your portfolio or your images directly to your website so that there is that seamless integration. So right. that's, you know, a possibility too. And that might be something that you want to look for when you're looking down all of these solutions, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, because. All right, so let's take uh, Squarespace, for example. We've both played with that. Um, they have a really nice admin side. They have a really nice back end where you can design and create really beautiful looking websites. Their hosting platform right. is really good. It's rock solid. It uses uh, Amazon's data centers as their backbone. So um, it's very rare that your website will ever come down. Um, in fact, um, you know, Leo Laporte, he does... Uh, this Week in Tech, it's another uh, podcast right. about technology. Um, he's huge. He's got a huge following. Um, many, many people listen to him. And there are many times where he will um, talk about a website on his show. 
And he's got a lot of people that watch his show live. And then all of a sudden you've got thousands of people that go over to that website all at the same time to check it out. Crash. And the website crashes because it can't handle yeah. all of that simultaneous traffic. Exactly. Well, Squarespace sites don't go down. They're on Amazon and they expand um, resources on the fly as needed and then scale back when it's not needed. So from that exactly. standpoint, it's very nice. Um, yeah. That cloud computing, as they as they call yep, it, yeah, absolutely. Um, cloud computing, as you need it, it expands, it grows yes. bigger as the uh, as the uh, need arises. So yeah, that's that's definitely important, especially if you think you're going to get a ton of traffic. Right now, they do have photography portfolio site templates, but they don't necessarily have photography sales templates as part yeah. of you know as part of their main package. Um, they yeah. have galleries, and they do have the ability for you to do sales, but you're probably going to end up having to do a little bit more custom work with that. Yeah. Like a WooCommerce or something like that. Um, well, yeah, that's not going to work on Square's platform, Squarespace's no. platform, but yeah, you'll need no. some form of shopping cart. Um, then right. you have ViewBook. I mean, there's a lot of photographers out there that are using ViewBooks. Um, they're really nice. They're nice looking. Um, but again, kind of the same, you know, thing there's a lot of people using it so you're going to find a lot of similarities between your site and the next right. photographer's site so that's something to consider as well um smug mug photo shelter and then exposure manager like you said they all have integration capabilities so right. you can pull them into your own site or you can run them as standalone sites and actually do right. fulfillment through them do the printing the whole deal just like joe uh described with exposure manager um, really, my personal preference, though, and and you know, I guess it's because I'm a web developer, but I prefer using WordPress. Um, right. I don't like the idea of having my websites um, basically held captive, <laughs> if you will, within a certain provider's platform. Right. Um, basically, your functionality, your capabilities are limited upon what that you know what that platform will allow you to do. Now, if, or if they go belly up and now all of a sudden you have, let's say three or four years worth of jobs and 300 different projects in there. Now what happens to those 300 projects? So right. if you retain, let's say control over it, obviously you won't end up with that type of issue. So definitely when you're making the decision of who to go with, you want to go with someone that's been around that for a while and that's been a while, you yeah, know, reputable absolutely. and you know, they're not going anywhere anytime soon. You know, but even with WordPress, I would not go with a wordpress.com account. Um, those are free accounts. Right. They do have paid versions. Um, you're very limited with that platform. You can only run plugins that WordPress has approved to Certified run with the platform. Approved, yeah. Um, so my recommendation is a self-hosted WordPress, uh, website. From there, I mean, there's all kinds of functionality that you can add. I mean, there are templates that are created specifically for photographers um, to create galleries, to sell products. Uh, Photoprati is one of them. Um, right. They they make a really nice um, template. Uh, you've got, I don't know, like 70 something different variations. It is a template. So you are working right. within a templated environment. But the functionality is really good. And they even have e-commerce. So you can um, sell your photos or, you know, as, either as digital downloads or as prints um, right through their website. Um, now, they don't necessarily integrate with a third-party uh, fulfillment company. So, you know, that's something to think about as well. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, the bottom line with this whole, you know, thing is figure out what you want to sell, how you want it sold, and how do you want it displayed? Right. And then how much resource and time you want to put into maintaining and actually doing the sales? Right. You know, it, when you do it yourself, you have full control, but it's a lot more time consuming and it's something that you have to fulfill continuously. If you go with another provider that they do it for you, now you're at the mercy of them. And, you know, so it's there's positives and negatives, but at the bottom line is, is just figure out exactly, you know, what, how you want it displayed how you want it sold and you know, how much time do you want to put into it? How much effort? And with the amount of the list that we have here, one of these would probably suit your needs. Yeah, I think so. I mean, there, of course there's other companies out there. There always are. I just, sure. you know, kind of mentioned yeah. the more popular yeah, ones. Um, but yeah, definitely look around and also do keep in mind that many of these companies that fulfill your print orders 
um, take a percentage. So, you know, you're not only paying for the print to be processed, but they're taking a little cut of it as well. So that's something that you definitely need to look into when you're, when you're planning out your strategy here. Right, right. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Well, I think we have three more winners. Yeah, we got to right? announce three more and we're already running long. So we need to like roll here. I know we need to get out of here. So, uh, yeah. So three more winners. So we have Terry and Terry won a focus pyramid. Linda also nice. won a focus pyramid and Daryl got another one of the shoot proof accounts. So that's a nice. one year subscription to their 5,000 photo plan. So that's pretty awesome. Very, very awesome. That is great. Yes. That is great. So, well, I guess, you know, there's, there's one other thing that kind of wanted to touch on before we uh, uh, get out of here. Just a, a quick little thought. And it's something that, you know, people, you know, they, they, I don't know if they know about it or they do or don't or whatever. We've talked about this in the past and it's the Lytro camera. Remember? Yeah. It's like this little camera and it's like you just look through the barrel you take the picture and that's it. And then what happens is, is in software, you go ahead and decide where your focus point is. Right. Well, um, someone was asking me a question on, on Twitter about something similar to this. And what do I think about, you know, uh, doing this type of thing? And, you know, we've been doing this for a long time, for ages. I mean, I've been, I've been in photography now for about 25 years. We've been doing something. It's like a hyper focal distance let's say hyper focus and what we do is like a lytro we do it manually so many times when we're doing photography for macro work or if we're doing products you know if we're shooting at let's say one four at least we get this milky background and we still need let's say the watch in perfect sharpness from the beginning of the watch to the end of the watch how do you do it right well you know of course you can use a ton of light blast it with light, shoot it at a high, uh, at, you know, let's say at F16 or F22. But the problem is, is then you start losing your background. It ends up being a mess. The way to do it, and if anyone has not tried this in the past, give this a shot. It's one of, you know, it kind of, it's one of those things that once you play with it and you see the results, you're like, oh my God, this is awesome. So it's the equivalent of bracketing exposure, but I call it bracketing your depth of field. So what you would do is you set up your camera on a tripod and let's say you're taking a picture of your watch. You would manually focus on it because you do not use autofocus at this point, right? right? You manually fo manually focus on the very tip of the front closest to the camera and then a little bit further back, a little bit further back, a little bit further back till you get to the end. You might end up with two images. You might end up with 20 images. It's completely, it just depends on what you're shooting at or what f-stop and how much depth of field you're trying to, uh, what the result is that you're trying to get. Right. By doing this, when you go and merge those two images or 20 images in Photoshop, you have the ability to create a, let's not say infinite, but a specific, depth of field like you would by bracketing exposure you can end up with a specific clarity on the image so the very last right. image when you want it to go to that milkiness at the very back end of let's say the watch that last photo will come out just beautifully and everything behind it will be just that soft beautiful milky looking um, um, a blur to it, let's say. So That's cool. something to try if, I don't know, you know, it's one of those things. It's definitely more of a pro tip that, but someone was asking about how to do it and they were kind of referencing this, this Lytro camera and how you can adjust that, you know, right to me, I mean, that's cool and all it's kind of hokey. And, you know, you're not going to get the same results as this. Remember, you're going to take, let's say, two to 20 images that are 25 megapixels each. So the amount of clarity that you can get by doing this, you know, hyper focus, let's say right. uh, this infinite, you know, specific, let's say, focus is just amazing. And once you do it a couple of times, and you look at your results, you're going to be like, oh, my God, what I would like to see is anyone that tries this technique. Um, like in the future, as I kind of put these little techniques out there, if you try it and you love it and you have a photo that you did with it, send us it, send us through your sure. Facebook page or however, right. And share it with the community. And, uh, and we could discuss it a little bit more on a, a future show. Yeah, but definitely absolutely. Give it a Head over to Facebook. You could post it up there. Um, that gives us the ability that, you know, with your permission, we could even download it and include it in the show and the video. Right. That way we can look at it and talk about it. Um, otherwise we can just look at it on the website, not a problem. Um, but yeah, I mean, share with the community, put some comments in there of how you created it. And, uh, that way, you know, everybody can kind of learn from it as well. 
Exactly. Cool technique. Exactly. I wish I can go into it a little bit deeper, but uh, the show's running late, so we are out of here. But definitely, if uh, you guys want to hear a little bit more about it or share your pictures, please do, and we'll talk about it in the future. Future episode. That is right. So, Joe, let's get out of here. Um, where yes. can people reach you? So they can find me through Twitter. You can go to, that's at Joseph Christina, and that's Christina without an H. Great, and you can connect with me on Twitter, and it's at Trevor Current. Awesome. All right, Trevor, we are done. We are out of here. Yes. You can get all of the show notes from this episode by visiting digitalphotographycafe.com forward slash 101. And don't forget, if you enjoyed the show, please give us a five-star review in iTunes. Help spread the word through Twitter. And now you can give us a call through our new comment line by visiting digitalphotographycafe.com forward slash love. So keep your questions and comments coming and we will see you next week. You've been watching the Digital Photography Cafe show with Trevor Curran and Joseph Christina. Be sure to subscribe to the show for free in iTunes or through RSS. You can also listen on Stitcher and TuneIn Radio and watch in HD on TiVo. Visit digitalphotographycafe.com for show notes and to connect with your hosts. 